Hi everybody. Today I'm going to be disking. I have got a portion of this field already disked. The further half is all done, but this lower half is always wetter than the top half. So that's why I haven't done this side yet, this end, but I'm going to work on that today. As I go farther to the right, it gets even worse. You can see the darker soil over there. So I will just slowly work my way that way. So often if I just hit it once the disc, it dries out really nice. So hopefully that's what's going to happen here today. And uh, I'll uh, get this done. It's so important to keep the fertility up on this farm and anybody's farm, of course. And I used to milk cows here. Uh, it's been almost, I don't know, 10 years now since I stopped milking cows. But when I was milking cows, I had plenty of manure to put on the fields to keep the fertility up. And now I have plenty of manure from the horses and, and my beef cows that I have. I still get quite a lot of manure, manure from them, but they are running loose in a pen and outside. So all I'm able to catch is what manure that that is there in the in the pens when they're inside eating their hay or just uh, resting in the pens. So I am short on manure or some sort of fertilizer for these fields. I am farming mostly organically. Um, actually, I'm farming 100% organically, but I'm not certified. But uh, everything I do here is is as a organic farmer would be doing it. I haven't done that all my life, but for the past quite a few years, I have been doing that. So, anyways, we need to put some something on for add to fertility. I was going to get some chicken manure, and uh, but I have a a farmer. Um, a large farmer not too far from here that we've known since we moved here and I'll, I saw them go by the other day with their liquid manure spreader so I've had them spread liquid manure on my farm before and I flagged them down to see if they could come and put some on my fields for this year and the top half of the field I was able to put it on have them put it on but the lower half here I did not because it's still too wet we just put two loads on the top half of this field just enough for our cornfield, that's all I put it on for right now. So I want to talk a little bit about large farms. And I know a lot of people, probably especially that watch my channel, just think that the small farm is so much better than the large farm. And uh, I personally am a small farmer, so I, I, I do somewhat agree with that. But I think there's also a real need for large farms also. Um, the farmer that I'm getting the manure from is actually Brenda's distant relative and uh, when we first moved here 30 years ago um, he was the first one we actually met and uh, he has been such a huge help to us ever since we've been here. He's loaned us equipment and done so many things for us and I just can't thank him enough for all the many things they did for us when we first started out. But when he was, at that time, he was only milking 100 cows since that time, he has grown to, I think they're milking three or 4,000 cows. I don't know. It's an awful lot of cows. And, uh, you know, a lot of people just have a dislike for large farms. But, you know, I would hate to feed all the people in the world from my little farm. And I realize that none of even the big farms can feed everybody. But um, the way things are now, without these large farms, I don't know how this world would even get along because... We need the food to feed the to feed the families, and uh, there are so few of us horse farmers out there that we surely are not going to be able to do that job. And I realize that a lot of the things that the large farmers are kind of forced to do because of their size is not always the best way to to grow food. But sometimes they just are in a situation where they really can't do a lot about it. But I don't know. I just I think about this sometimes and think, you know, when you compare my farm to some tiny little farm in, in Africa, for example, or some third world country, I'm a large farmer compared to them. I mean, I've got four huge draft horses out here disc in this field. And the those farms there, they would just love to be able to have a huge farm like I have because that's what I would be considered to them. So I just think we have to be careful not to judge these large farmers too poorly because of the fact that they, they are large farms. And uh, I just, we need to appreciate them and 
and realize that they're doing the best they they can under the circumstances and and I just am glad that they're out there um, farming even though I don't even agree with some of the things they do but and I I'm sure that they have to snicker a lot at me the way I'm doing it and that's okay because we're all different we do things differently and uh, we just have to accept the fact that we're all different and um, you know it's not something for this what I do surely isn't for everybody and uh, what they do isn't for me but it is for them so anyways I want to show you um, us spreading this manure it's just such a huge contrast between I don't know if that's the right word, uh, but just the difference between what they use for equipment and what I use for equipment. So I would just once again just like to thank this farmer for being such a good um, neighbor to me, even though he's six miles away when we first moved up here. And actually, I'd just like to thank also the so many people helped us when we moved here. Um, and this might be a good time to even thank them, the fact, the amount of people that not just my family, but so many people from Vermont that helped out when we moved. We had uh, a friend of ours that had a, saw, a sawmill that would brought, I think, two tractor trail loads of equipment up for us. And numerous people brought up cattle for us. And you all know who you are, and I just want to thank you for what you did for us those many years ago. And uh, I guess that doesn't have anything to do with large farms, but I just wanted to do that. So anyways, let's move on to spreading some manure the quote quote modern way so here comes the big old tractor and the manure spreader like I said the farm their farm is six miles from us so they do a lot of different farms from a ways away from their home place so the way they do it is they haul it in with tractor trailers and one tractor trailer will fill this spreader that's how big this spreader is I was planning on having two loads, so the second load here is driving in the driveway now. So I'm gonna ride in the tractor with Norm, one of their employees. How many horsepower is this rig? 500 horse. 500 horse, wow. There's a beast. They will pull if you get after it. <laughs> I better make ruts too. Oh, it will make Oh it. my goodness. Yeah, I can run in a foot of mud too. Doesn't affect it. No, but it, you've got to fill a hole in it later. Yeah, exactly. I'm hoping to stay away from that because my equipment's not very big. Well, it looks like it's dry on top. Actually, I cut in less. No, copper was spread with a spreader and a 50 horse tractor, and I could go where he couldn't. The spreader yeah. would sink, and I'd go very across. Yeah. Now, my shop. Well, I dissed the whole top half, so I just want to do the top half because I don't really want the ruts. So here Norm backs the spreader underneath the spout that's coming out of the tractor trailer and the tractor trailer has a pump on it and that loads the spreader. As you have seen, this spreader has eight wheels, four on each side and Norm actually has a way to be able to steer these wheels as he's going through the field. He'll show you later. You got a nice little setup here. You got it. I got it all except for the manpower to run it all. What do you got? A little back hole there? Or a An excavator down there. An excavator, yeah. Oh, that's nice. I pulled a huge rock out of the field yesterday. Put it on the stone boat and skidded it out with the horses. See, uh, something like that's handy. But I, I, it was such a big rock. I'll show you. It's on the fence over there. I had to put all four horses on to skid it out. <laughs> it was a big monster. So that sucker put that big rock out, right? It was all that that thing could do to get it up out of the ground. I stood beside it and it came up to my shoulder. Oh. You're determined to get that out of there, right? I was. Nice. And I, I couldn't push it with the excavator to get it off the field. That's why I had to put it on the stone boat and pull it up. Nice right there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. In places, but not really. I'm used to Vermont Hills, so this oh, is not yeah. stony at all. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but see my oats out there? Yeah. yeah. They, that's a good catch. Yeah. You're gonna have to drive in the oats a little bit probably just to get through. Just a little bit. It's a tight fit, yeah. That's all right.
over there is that boulder I pulled it right underneath that apple tree. See that? It's <laughs> quite, quite a piece of So a uh, tractor never picked that up. No. Okay. And you'll see my hole there, so don't strap make sure you don't go on top of that. I mean it's pretty solid, but just make sure. You don't have to make it perfect, just go around, overlap, whatever you gotta do. I'm not fussing. If, it, if you spray it on into the hay field, that's fine too. I just saw you guys here, so I decided I better put some on while I had the chance. Maybe you can't even get two loads on here, I don't know. I would have thought so too. We'll turn on the, just to be safe. But you can turn around that further piece, a little further down there, but... I just don't think my horses can pull you out. <laughs> yeah, that's a pot right here, probably would sink in. Tire tracks are fine right there. You know better than I. Yeah, you can tell how it reacts. Yeah. It's probably even safe to do a lot of that, but let's not bother. Take the It's amazing. You hit it once through the disc, it dries right out. Oh yeah, at least here. Like I said, if you overlap, it's perfectly fine. How long will this take to dry and be fit to, to hit it with a spring tooth to smooth it out? A few hours? Yeah. I was hoping to get this ready to plant the next day or so. Oh yeah. We got a good setup here. It's a nice setup. Yeah, we like that. We used to do the ad tour, sure, didn't Yeah. Last time I was here. Yeah, I still do some. Heavy load. I had four horses on it. Pull that out of there. That was a much showing, but there's a lot of rock down there. Yeah, down lower. But it's it's pretty good. It's, it's not bad. I plowed this about three weeks ago now, and it's good because it let it the sod rot out a little bit. So I'm disking it, and it's coming up nice. It's just once over with the disc. And it's just a little old disc down there, you know? So I'd love to hear your thoughts on large farms. Put them in the comments below. Yeah. Tractor. Yeah, it makes a difference. A lot of people don't know that. You, have to be, you, look, you look at the thing and you pretend you're on the standing on the back end. You know? Yeah, it's weird. Yep, so this bump here steers the, the, the trailer. trailer. Yeah. That's me. It's funny, we got two of the extremes here. This crew and, and my crew. Yeah, you get the biggest and best equipment, and I got the oldest and <laughs> most in, in, uh, antique equipment. So here we are coming in with our second load. We were ab easily able to get this all on the top half of this field, and we got the spread and all done. So let's go now to me trying to get my corn planter ready to plant this corn, which I hope to get done in a few days. We are at my corn planter here. I'm doing a little work on this getting ready to go plant corn um it was i don't know about 2 30 i guess right now and it's on a very warm day very nice beautiful may day 
but uh, it's warm enough that I actually did finish harrowing the field this morning and I'm going to wait till actually this evening to go out and plant because it'll be a lot cooler and it won't take me that long to plant so that's what I'll do. So I just want to show you a few things what we're dealing with right now. I actually have um, three different varieties of corn that I'm going to plant. I don't have that much. I've got like four acres to plant but I have um, leftover corn from last year and the year before and I know it's a little bit risky using corn that old but I'm not too concerned about that and so I have these two varieties maybe even three there's three different bags I can't really remember for sure what is what with the one bag it doesn't it's just in a grain bag so I'm not sure what variety that one was so anyways the first variety that I'm going to plant is a earlier season corn than the other variety so I'm going to put, plant that on the outside of the field so if that dries down faster for picking I will pick that first and then the center of the field I can actually leave and pick you know several weeks later if I, if I choose to do that. Um, but anyways this since these are different varieties that means they have to have different plates to go in. These old corn planters have what we call plates. There is a lot of different plates for this planter. Um, this is a B7 plate and this is a B2 plate. Yeah, B2. And so my first variety of corn that I'm using is calling for a B2 plate. So that's what I'm gonna put into the planter now. And then later on, we will refill the planters up and use the other plates. So to put the plates in, just the process of taking your, the front hoppers here are for grain. The back hoppers are for fertilizer, which I do not use anymore because I'm organic, so I don't, I don't use any fertilizer. Um, so, but these are on a, a tilt thing, so they can come off that way. So this one here I've already taken off and it's upside down. And to put the plate on, you just have this little lip here. And you pop that out like that. and it drops into place and I'm grabbing the wrong one. No, these are B2s. See, they just drop in like that. You can't really do it wrong because there's only one way to do it. It drops right in place. And that snaps in place like that. So this will go back on here. As you can see, my corn plant is fairly old and it's not that great a shape. And at some point, the front hoppers have changed. That's why there's one taller one than the other one. They originally would have came the same length hopper. So what I'll do, I got this much corn in here. I'm gonna split it between the two hoppers. So that hopefully they'll run out both about the same time. So now we're ready to plant corn. Um, I've got not a lot in there, about that high in those hoppers. And I'm going to have to watch it close as I'm going along. And then when they're out, I will probably come back here so I can swap plates and swap corn to the other bag. So maybe this evening you can watch and we'll plant corn together. Stay tuned for the next video.